What is up my friends, how's it going? And welcome back to the second Morian episode with your fellow comrade, Summary. The Unique Wars have begun and uh, Itoshoka has leveled up. I am actually going to take the military logistian uh, for that upkeep cost as well as uh, the military conscriptor for that replenishment rate. And then I'm going to go ahead and disband him. The idea is to reinstate him in Pura in order to recruit our next units, our next army. I do, however, want to replace this uh, these spearmen. As most of you recollect in the previous uh, video, I had taken on the Hariva and conquered Atrakana in the process, wiping out the faction. And it was a very uphill battle. It was difficult. We were fighting almost twice. In fact, more than twice our enemy uh, in terms of size. However, we did manage to win with our little trick that I showed you. And uh, one of the things is our spearmen are incredibly weak. They only have one armor, which is pretty much the lowest armor value in the game. And I do want to replace the spearmen with our next spearmen, which is basically the uh, Morian armored spearmen that have 25 armor rating and some better melee and melee attack and melee defense stats. Meanwhile, as far as population is concerned, I am, despite having Hinduism as a major culture in the region of uh, Prada, I am losing population. And the reason being is that I am low on the regional supplies. As you can see over here, we are at minus 58.5 regional supplies due to that reason the population is in decline so we're gonna have to try to reverse that situation in order to improve the population uh, situation in Prada. meanwhile there are several things i've also done i have uh, asked the bactrians to join the war against the herovatis in order to appease them as you can see they are fairly neutral towards us and one of the reasons is because they had two armies right outside the settlement and I didn't want them to attack Ashoka in the end turn as he is not in a position to face off against two fully uh, you know, replenished uh, full stacks. And so instead the Bactrians having been appeased have marched their armies. One of them has moved back towards Bactra while as the other one moved west towards Susia. Don't really know what's happened over there. They probably kind of lost that engagement. Or perhaps have not yet even reached the settlement. Uh, time will tell. Meanwhile, our spy over here is going to move to Capucine in order to get sight on what's going on in the Herovitis. Going to deploy him. As you can see, Eucratidea is ungarrisoned. So my guess is that the Bactrians are going to move eastward and capture that in the next turn. However, when we even look at the garrison, it's really underpowered. So the Bactrians might actually for, you know, deal with the Herovitis for us. Which is kind of a problem and kind of not a problem. Because if they do, we are just going to declare war against the Bactrians and peace the uh, Parthians. So in a lot of my Let's Play series, you will see me play that diplomatic game in order to, you know, get the best opportunity and safest expansion routes possible. Uh, apart from that, in the previous uh, turn, before I ended the turn, I had established uh, some agreements with Muscat. Greetings, friend. However, Let they have cancelled it. So I'm going to re-establish those. Welcome, friend. And I don't really want to get uh, trade agreements with the Seleucids, although they do guests. like us. The reason being is because they are at war with Parthia. Same with Parsa, they are at war with Parthia, and I don't want to antagonize the Parthians just yet, as currently I'm not in a situation to do so. Meanwhile, our buildings in Atrokoana have also completed repairing, so I'm going to go ahead and build that supply pit and a sacred site. Keep in mind, in the 1.31 public beta, the Morians have received an overhaul to their temples, and pretty much I designed these unit cards. Uh, as per the request of Sergeant Meem Suraj. And so let's have a quick look at the six temple options we have. 
We have the Temple of Sri Devi, which basically gives a plus 20 wealth from all sources. This is really good in your economic provinces. Next up, we have the Temple of Shiva Mahadeva, which gives plus 8 to unit replenishment. I don't really build this that much. And moving on to the next option, we have the Vishnu Deva Temple Complex. And that gives our maximum cultural conversion at a plus 8 Hindu cultural influence per turn. So you will be seeing a lot of this, especially since we have to convert a lot of provinces to Hinduism. Final, uh, next up, we have the Aparajita Devi Temple. And that gives plus 2 experience for heavy infantry recruits. This is uh, useful in our military recruitment provinces. As you will see when we specialize our provinces, I will be building this temple in our military recruitment provinces. Next up, we have the Saraswati Devi Temple, and this gives plus 12% to research rate and also a respectable plus 6 Hindu cultural influence. So, pretty much you'll be seeing a lot of the Vishnu Deva Temple complex and the Saraswati Devi complex being built. And finally, we have Buddhism uh, chain. And as most of you know, the Mauryans uh, in the empire did have Buddhism as a religion. In fact, it uh, became the predominant religion during the reign of Ashoka. And it is the Buddhist temple chain that gets the uh, special tier 5 temple, namely the Great Stupa. However, as you can see, it does give Buddhist cultural influence, so that's not really good for our faction. However, it does also give plus 7 public order per turn, which kind of counteracts that. Uh, I am not going to be going ahead and building this uh, you know, in the beginning of the campaign. However, I will build it in our future economic province. Alright. One of the reasons I am building the supply pit, because as I mentioned in my previous video, uh, summers can get pretty harsh over here. And armies will take a lot of attrition in this region. Building a supply pit in Atrakoana is actually quite ideal in this region. Considering if we go to the strategic overview, Atrakoana is in the center of this entire Eastern Persian region. And pretty much a supply pit can supply three adjacent regions, as you can see right at the bottom above the garrisons um, that it provides. And back to our strategic overview, you can see that from Atrakoana, it can supply Thusia, which is one region away, Nisa, which is two regions away, uh, Tadrakartha, which is yet another re two regions away, Ekatom Pylos, two regions away from uh, Atrokoana. And in the north, we can supply Marv, which is one region away, Bactria, one region away, uh, Capucine, one region away, Eucritidea, two regions away. And, uh, you know, the furthest we can go is all the way up to Raga, which is three regions away down here in the south. And over here, we can go all the way to Susa. And we can go all the way to uh, Gore. So, as you can see, we are looking about about that much coverage, which is uh, pretty much uh, going to, you know, cover our armies for the early game. Meanwhile, this army over here is not replenishing. Uh, we do have some population class, so I am going to go ahead and move them into Frada. However, they can't reach. Uh, the settlement so i'm gonna go ahead keep them in atrokoana for this turn and another thing i am doing is i'm slowly moving up our dignitary in order to help with that cultural conversion in atrokoana i am looking to convert this eastern city center in pura into a slave fence however i can't really do that because i haven't researched the technology yet once I do finish uh, researching water slicing, I will go ahead and research the uh, prerequisite technology so that I can upgrade that building. However, without any further ado, let's go ahead and end the turn and I will see you all in the next turn. Welcome back to the next turn. Can rally some horsemen. Mitoshoka has also returned home. So we are going to go ahead and reinstate him in Pura. 
and we're gonna go ahead and also recruit the Morian Armored Spearmen. About five of them should be enough for now. Quick look at what's going on over here. We are slowly replenishing. We won't replenish in the next turn. The reason... <coughs> excuse me. The reason being is... Um, because we don't have Shudra population class, they have been depleted due to the replenishment in the previous turn. Um, so I am going to march towards Frada. But I, yeah, apparently I can't patrol over here. They should be able to replenish now since Frada has some Shudra population class. Well, our supplies have kind of slightly improved, so we are gaining uh, population. So that's always great. Um, yeah, one of the things I do recommend, especially when conquering a new faction and taking over regions that don't have your culture prevalent, is try to take two regions in your very first turn. And the reason being is that you can always alternate between the two regions in order to keep your punishment rate up. Because uh, you will get an initial settler boost to each uh, region. That gives about 60 uh, units for your first class. About 100 units for your second class. And 250 units for your Shudra class, third class. And uh, you will pretty much uh, deplete all of them in a single turn of replenishment. And then pretty much what you want to do is go to the next settlement. Which will have replenished by then. And then replenish over there. And then, uh, you know, that cycle keeps repeating itself. However, I don't think there's much else to do in this turn. So, I am going to go ahead and end the turn. Welcome back to the next turn. Our army is almost finished replenishing over here. We do have some Shudras, but keep in mind our supplies are going back down. So, we kind of are losing that population class again, so... Once again, I'm going to move back up to the north. As you can see, Atrokana should have 250 Shudras. So, I guess within the next turn, our army should almost be completely replenished. Which would allow us to kind of march on towards Capucine. And I will explain the diplomatic situation in a bit. So, looking at the diplomatic situation up here in the north, the Bactrians are at war with Parthia and the Herovitus, and I kind of asked them to join that war against the Herovitus. And the reason being is uh, because they had two full stacks over here in Atrokoana, and our army, which had just taken over Atrokoana, was fairly depleted. So I didn't really want them to attack me. They are fairly neutral now towards me, so that's great. Uh, and after achieving that relationship status with them, they have moved one army westwards towards Susia, which I'm guessing kind of got wiped out. The army, other army towards Bactra, which has then moved into Euphratidea. Uh, meanwhile, the Parthians have taken over Mar from the Bactrians. And as you can see, it's a hodgepodge of, uh, you know, warring states up here in the north. The Parthians, meanwhile, are in turn sandwiched between the Atropatkan and the Bactrians. So, it'll be interesting to see how that power dynamic plays out. Um, moving back into the campaign, our dignitary has finally reached Atrokoana, so I'm going to go ahead and deploy him in that region. And I have finished recruiting the spearmen. So, I guess oh, next I'm actually going to go ahead and get the archers. I'm going to get, let's say, I want to, give me a second here. I'm going to think about my army composition for now. Uh, five spearmen, let's say five infantry, that's 11. Plus four archers, that's 14. Uh, sorry, plus four archers, that's 15. Plus four cavalry. And... That's 19. And I need two elephant units, so that's 21. So what I do want to do is get just four infantry units. Meanwhile, I will get that four archer units right away. Keep in mind, I do want to spread it out. I don't want to deplete the population entirely in Pura. 
you can see we are getting 75 units per turn because we have 8,000 buy shares. And uh, however, if I do deplete them, let's have a look at Atrokoana. As you can see, at a depleted rate, we gain a lot less population. So I do want to spread it out. I am going to move uh, Bitashoka into Orea. And it is here in Orea that I will actually recruit the Morian Longbowmen. There we go. Alright, so in about three turns, we can recruit our better elephant units, which we will go ahead and do that. However, I guess with that, we can go ahead and end the turn, and I will see you all in future when our armies have been uh, you know, assembled. I will move Ashoka down to the south, where he will link up with, with Ashoka, and the armies will merge. I will replace some low tier units like the Shudras over here and go ahead and disband these mercenaries as they will cost me a fair bit to, up to maintain and yeah i will go ahead and disband some of these lower tier units and after the army merges i will march towards the north in an attempt to take out uh the herovitus at capucine hopefully the bactrians won't get to them first however if they do we don't have much of an issue we are going to engage uh, the Parthians and request them to join the war against the Bactrians and that should kind of appease them which should kind of secure our western uh, northwestern flank meanwhile in the western flank everything's looking fairly stabilized we don't have any agreements with the uh, with Parsa who have kind of wiped out Asagartha uh, however they are friendly with us so I doubt that they would attack us uh, so anyways, I'll see you guys all in the future. Welcome back to the future. Go ahead and select three. Uh, I has leveled up, so we are going to go ahead and get that mass poisoning effect. As well as our assassination chance. Um... Meanwhile, quick summary of what's happened. We have finally built our infantry quarters. Our economy is a bit low due to the maintenance that it requires. We have, however, also finished uh, researching foreign customs, so we can go ahead and build that intensely. Trader, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, meanwhile, our two armies did manage to link up. I transferred all of the updated units to Ashoka who then promptly marched towards Capucine. However, the Bactrians in the meantime have taken over Capucine and wiped out the Herovatis. Uh, and with Ashoka, after transferring over the units to Ashoka, has moved up north into Atrakoana just to help out with that public order and at the same time uh, level up as a general. <clears throat> Speaking of technology, we have completed, uh, so we are going to go for that temple tax, which gives an additional plus two cultural conversion. And uh, in Haraiva, the province itself, as you can see, Hinduism is slowly inching up towards being the major culture of the region. Currently, it's at 21.4%, whereas Persians at 29. So give about a 2.2 change per turn, give about like four turns and we should have Hindu majority region. Uh, meanwhile, even the Bactrians have kind of released a fate over here, Eucratidea. And uh, that pretty much spells the end of the Herovitus. Looking at our strategic overview map, as you can see, the Parthians have expanded and now they are at the doorsteps of the Bactrians. They can choose to attack into Transoxiana or into Bactra. And uh, we are going to, however, push with Ashoka and take over Capucine. Should be a fairly easy battle. The Bactrians have just taken over Capucine. However, the main danger is that that army that had taken over Capucine has marched back up here into this crossroads. Now, this crossroads is a strategic point in the map. Reason being, from here, you can pretty much access uh, Bactra, Capucine, and Atrocoana. And the Bactrian army that's positioned right here is in a strong position because it can pretty much choose which way to go. 
And I'm guessing most likely it will move towards Atrakoana actually, as the uh, settlement is fairly under garrison. So what we are going to do is we are actually going to move our army into Strada. And we are going to attempt our best to, as quickly as possible, recruit a secondary army. We're going to increase the taxes so that we can recruit our army as quickly as possible. And we are going to go ahead and get... Are you ready to serve? A couple of those Morian longbowmen. And we are almost also completed the Shrine of Vishnu Deva. I should give another plus four him the cultural conversion. Things are looking okay. So I can join this war against Bactria. And I'm going to actually ask the Parthians to join the war. I have engaged in some diplomacy with the Parthians. I have offered to join war against you know, factions that I'm not really close to, such as the Sadrakarta over here in the west, uh, the Sakaroka up here in the north, and the Zwar uh, Zwarzim also in the north. And that has given me two benefits. One is that I'm extremely friendly with the Parthians. They will still not, however, establish a trade agreement with me. And the second reason is, if you remember our factional traits here in the Mauryan dynasty, we get increased public order from war. So that's always helpful. Let's have a quick look here if it died. Faction, as you can see, plus two. Yeah, the faction. So we are getting plus two public order per turn due to that fact. However, without any further ado, I am going to go ahead and press the Parthians to join Please the war against the Bactrians. Before I do that, I can actually use my spy up here to attempt to sabotage the supplies. However, I can't do that as I don't have the money to do so. So I am going to just declare the war against the Bactrians. However, I am going to see if I can get some payment from Parthians. And they have managed to give me 600 ducats for it. So can I go ahead and sabotage this army right now? And the sabotage attempt has failed. So this army will inch ever so close towards Atrakoana. And that's not looking good at all. Uh, another option is they could march back down towards Capucine. And that's actually much better since we do have a almost full stack. Uh, keep in mind I did want to hire four melee units however my third level barracks has just finished upgrading so i can recruit some of those heavy infantry units which i will be using as my reserve line and temporarily i have hired some mercenaries to fulfill that role but as you can see my army is not a full stack because of so yeah let's go ahead and attack at the scene i can auto resolve the battle however i do want to take zero losses so I'm not going to show you this battle because, you know, it's fairly easy, nothing much to see here. So I am going to quickly get into this battle and pop right out and I will see you all back in the campaign once I have completed this battle. Welcome back to the campaign. I have completed the battle and conquered Capucine. I am going to go ahead and sack the settlement for that extra, or loot the settlement rather, for that extra income. And with that, I can turn off the taxes over here and start to repair some of these buildings. I do want to de demolish this levy camp. Won't be needing it. While I will repair this uh, wrestling. Ready for orders. So as you can see, we took no casualties, which is always great. Meanwhile, I do believe the Bactrians might choose to attack this Ready army. Which isn't going to be all of that, that much of a difficulty. They don't have any elephant units. So, that's pretty good, I guess. Over here, now that we have some money, I'm going to go ahead and hire some more of those archers. Get in a couple of our four infantry. I I want to get yep the Gadadasta Yoda Morian Heavy Maceman. Well, if I do that, 
will kind of lose out on that population. So instead, I am going to go ahead and recruit two elephant units. Or not. I'm just going to... Yeah, they're fairly expensive. I'm just going to rest it out between these guys. I ideally wouldn't want to hire any elite units from here from first class because I am hoping that my first class population can pretty much grow over there. So, yep. That's pretty much going to be it. I guess it's just the four archers. And perhaps I can get just one elephant extra in order to deal with the factory and stack if they choose to move west. So with that, I guess we have ended the turn. We can, however, before we end the turn, try to establish a trade agreement with the Parthians. They are super friendly with us and they won't still agree to a trade agreement. So I'm going to wait until the next turn and hopefully they should the next turn. See you all in the next turn. Alright, it is the end turn and the Bactrians have chosen to attack us. So what I'm going to do, they do have a few horse, horse archers, uh, about four of them. So what I am going to do is I'm going to click off the control large army as a garrison fairly useless. I don't want to manage them. And I am going to sally forth so that my elephants get uh, quite a good... Actually, I can opt not to sally and uh, stay within the settlement that way uh, I can force the army to engage my spear units and then you know flank yeah. them with my elephant units which would be a lot easier so I'm gonna fight this battle in the city and I will see you all in the battle welcome to the battle you can see we have the entire Bactrian army outside our city and we do have two extra garrison <laughs> units since we you know, aren't a full stack so I'm just gonna deploy them there. Meanwhile, our spear unit, we have two openings through which the Bactrians, I predict, are going to attack. One is over here and the other is over here. So I'm going to put my spearmen to kind of block that passage. Put them in uh, defensive formation. Same over here. Go ahead, put them into that defensive formation. <clears throat> while assign our general to first group archers to the second group and they shall be here put toggle on that guard mode get our cavalry third group and they will be on the right flank looking to encircle the enemy from the right and we will keep our elephants left flank go ahead put them up in or try to lock their formation into that ideal formation. There we go. Perfect. And are going to assign our spears into two different groups, one on the left and one on the right. And even our warrior guildsmen mercenaries into two other groups. Last thing we need to do is actually deploy some of these traps. We are going to deploy anti-cav here. Here, right in front of our spearmen and see if we can deploy some of the other traps yep i'm gonna deploy one over there the other one over here and if we can also get fire traps rolling oh, it doesn't seem like we i mean we can but you know it'll kind of you know hit our own troops so i'm not gonna go ahead and do that Alright, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and begin the battle. And while the enemy takes its time to approach us, we're going to have a quick look at the few units that we have. And as you can see here, we have the Morian Armored Spearmen. Some of the things I did design, as most of you know, the Bell Curious, the Bamboo Spears, and also this uh, iron edge of the Bell Shields, the Morian Bell Shields. And... We go on to our next unit over here. Nothing much that I have designed except for the same old quivers. And finally, when we look at our 
elephants over here as you can see they are not having that much of an elite tower as our main elephant units uh, however they do have these unique carpet designs that i had designed as well and of course that body paint all right so the battle has begun so i am going to micro my archers and in the hopes to hit their missile cavalry And I am also going to move my elephants out in an attempt to attack their, their units from behind. The fighting is pretty intense, but they should lose uh, against my spear units over here. While over here we do have another unit that's going to lose decisively. And we have dealt with one of the cavalry units almost. We await your orders. So I'm gonna shift my focus to the other cavalry unit. Ready. And the double. You can see our Morian longbowmen have a considerable range. Pretty much somewhere around here. So they can even hit this unit all the way over there. Ready now that our front lines are engaged, I am gonna charge in my mercenary. Guild Warriors. Get our general and our main elephant here. Yeah. Meanwhile, our cavalry on the right flank can kind of move around in a flank sort of a maneuver. Since archers have dealt with that cav, I am going to focus them down on the other uh, missile troops. And while these archers over here can target that horse cavalry, hopefully they can reach. And now that our general is almost in position, I am going to charge him into the back of the units. And they are a sword unit, so they should fairly get demolished. Our general is under attack. And I'm gonna inspire with the general. And while our other cavalry other elephants can come back here. Our general can move behind. It's, it's completed his first charge. I don't want him to get bogged down in fighting. And the archers have dealt with that cavalry unit so I am going to move them around. Meanwhile, our cavalry is in position, our Cambodian cavalry is in position to deal with their own archers. And I'm going to move my general to this ground over here to attack and And I am going to charge in with these elephants, tower elephants, which should do fairly well. Use our cavalry to hunt down those guys over there. And one more cavalry. Make sure we kill as much of the game army as we can. Uh, sorry. While our general can charge into the seats. The elephants have charged into the game line over there. Quick look at our general performing another charge. Fairly good charge, however, we did use one, lose one unit. And uh, very quickly, I'm gonna move my general back out. Meanwhile, over here on this flank, we have pretty much wiped out a couple of their units. We are gonna move our elephants back and perform another rear charge on this uh, Hoplite unit. And Hoplites are pretty weak from the air, as opposed to. Use that general to actually charge this guy. <laughs> and the uh, elephants charge that Hoplite unit once and for all. The other fence over here. Almost done wiping out that unit. These horsemen are trying to retreat. Do have a speed speed so they 
and we have got them below 30 so that's always great they will be wiped out that way. elephants are almost in position I'm gonna move these elephants back they didn't get a clean charge off on the top repair unit and that done we are going to charge with this elephant to that unit over there Use this horse unit to take out that. This horse unit to take out the unit. Elephants have charged in. And we are going to charge in with our general as well. Meanwhile, what's going on with our cavalry over here? They have dealt with that unit, so I am going to move them back to a position where they can help wipe out other enemy units. Elephants are taking a bit of damage and that's because of the uh, spearmen. They do have a bonus. Seven versus favor. elephants. However, we have dealt with those spearmen, so it should fairly be easy now to deal with the swordsmen. I'm gonna use our cavalry to kind of try to wipe out that enemy unit. The hopping phase over there have been wiped out. I am going to move this elephant in here to help our general and to go ahead and inspire. And with that, I think the enemy army is going to master out, so we are going to go ahead, fast forward, and wipe out the army. Get the archers to melee and get them into attack one of our units has used all its ammunition As you can see our general is really racking up the kills 650 the and enemy general is dead 700 for this unit go ahead charge that unit over there well, a quick look at our cavalry they do seem to have wiped out most of the enemy army so i am guessing since we played this battle really well that we are going to wipe out the entire enemy army and with that i think we are done so i'm gonna go ahead and end this battle and i'll see you all in the campaign as you can see our elephants have pretty much done let's say 800 plus 500 plus 700 so we're looking at, you know, we're looking at about 2,000 kills for the elephant. Anyway, I will see you guys in the campaign. Yeah! And with that, we have fended off and in fact wiped out that Bactrian army. Which is uh, always really nice. Yeah! And we are going to go ahead and enslave the captives to improve our relationship with the Parthians. And we are still in the end turn, so I will see you all in the next turn. Alright, so here we are in turn. The army has kind of lost some garrison units, so that I don't really care about garrison units. My lord. <clears throat> Meanwhile, over here, in the west, we have our second army that's in the process of recruiting some units. We are going to move our spy further up to the north, just to get a clear view on what's going on here in the north. And very quickly we are going to also build a sacred site to improve our cultural conversion over here in the province of Bactra. As you can see, we do have some Hindu culture to begin with, and that's because the province of Bactria is the only other province in game with local traditions of Hindu. And considering that we have uh, kind of recruited and dealt with this Bactrian threat up here, they no longer 
have control of this crossroads, which I will soon take charge of. Let's go ahead and level up Joka, get that army up, keep cost, that further replenishment cost, and some more missile damage inflicted. Uh, I am going to. He won't replenish in this turn, however, that's really unfortunate. And what I could do is actually move towards Atrakoana, but I don't want to do that because. Should the Euchre Tadeans decide to attack me, uh, I will be leaving Capucine undefended. So I have no other option but to sit here, stay put in Capucine. Meanwhile, what I will do is I will march this army down to the south in order to kind of reach uh, Orea so that I can recruit some of those infantry units. I am also going to up uh, upgrade the Temple of Vishnu Deva for more cultural conversion. As you can see, in another two to three turns, we should have Hindu culture as a majority culture. And with that, I am going to go ahead, end the turn, end the video, and I will see you all in the next video. In my we will, however, name, try to establish a trade agreement with the party. I am sure your words carry promptly refuse, intent, and I am going to see if I can join no any more of the people. useless wars. Arsakia. I have no idea where that faction is. And uh, it could be up here in the north, owned by Bactria. Arsakia, where are you? Somewhere here. Region unknown, so they could probably be. No, owner is Atropat Khan. Not entirely sure where's Arsakia. Anyhow, I am going to declare they kind of look like a Persian kind of faction with this emblem, so they might be somewhere over here. The lands of the Seleucids or the Atropid Khan itself. I'm gonna go ahead, join that war, get that trade agreement, see if they do it. I am nope. sure your words carry a cargo of honest intent. But Can we get a trade no agreement? We are gonna pay a little bit. See if they agree to that. Your I'm not willing to pay any meant, more than that, so with that I guess I'm gonna go ahead and end the video. Uh, so hope you all uh, like the video. Hope you all enjoyed and don't forget to like and subscribe if you're interested in more such videos and peace and love.